Hey everybody, welcome back to another vector statics worked problem video. In this video, we're gonna work out a particle equilibrium problem in three dimensions. So this is the setup here. There's a crate being hung at point A down here. Point A is on the negative Y axis, and the attachment points are at point B, C, and D, which are all in the XZ plane. So you can kind of think of the XZ plane as the ceiling, and the crate is hanging below that ceiling a distance of 45 inches. We're also given that the crate weighs 1,000 pounds, and the question is asking us to find the amount of tension in each of the three cables, AB, AC, and AD. Now the trick to solving this problem is to basically recognize that this is a particle equilibrium problem in three dimensions, which means we want to analyze the forces at a particular point in space. Now the natural point to consider in this problem would be point A, because that's the point at which all three cables and the supported load meet. So naturally the next thing we'd want to do is to consider the forces at point A. We'll also note that all of these forces are vectors, so we want to make sure we denote those and we'll consider the thousand pound force. We'll just give that a name, we'll call it W. The diagram itself really only gives us clues as to which directions the forces are generally pointing. For instance, the force TAB, you can kind of tell that that force is in the X negative Y plane, just by the given geometry. You can also tell that the force due to the tension in cable AC is gonna be in the negative Y negative Z plane. But if you look at force TAD, this is a force that's not in any of the coordinate planes. So it's gonna be a little bit more tricky to find the direction of this force, which is why this problem is a little bit more challenging. So for this problem, rather than using our traditional direction cosines and trigonometry to find the directions of these forces, we're actually gonna use the unit vector approach. Now what that means is that for each one of these forces, we can describe them as a magnitude and a direction. So for instance, the force T sub AB, that's gonna be equal to the magnitude of the tension in that cable multiplied by the direction of that force, which will denote lambda sub AB. Right, so this is a really fundamental way to describe any vector in 2D or 3D space. The magnitude TAB, that's just the amount of tension in that cable. It doesn't tell which direction the cable is pulling, it just tells how hard it's pulling. Whereas the lambda sub AB vector, that's a unit vector. So it has a length of one unit, and its whole purpose is to just point in the proper direction of the tension force. So to find that unit vector, we're just gonna use the basic definition. And so this notation applies for any time you wanna find a unit vector that points in the proper direction. So in the numerator, you have the vector AB, which is just the vector that literally points points from point A to point B. Now, if you look back at the original diagram, the vector going from point A to point B, that vector certainly does not have unit length. In fact, you can see here, the vertical component of that is already 45 inches, so it's much longer than one inch. Because lambda has to be a unit vector, what you do is you normalize by dividing by the magnitude of that vector. So in the denominator here, this AB, that's not a vector, that's just the magnitude of the length of that vector. So if you use this formula for finding lambda, you will always end up with a unit vector that points in the direction of interest. Now the tricky part is to make sure that you get the AB vector or the, the length vector correct on the first try because that's gonna dictate what the overall position is of the lambda vector. So the best way I can explain to do this is to pretend you're starting at the first point, so in this case starting at point A, and figuring out how far you need to go in each of the three directions, X, Y, Z, to get to point B. That's the way to think about this vector. So to get from point A to point B, you've gotta travel along the X axis some amount, and that amount is actually given in the problem statement. This point B is 28 inches along the x-axis. So we've got 28 inches in the i direction. Now to get from A to B, we've also got to travel vertically along the y-axis. And that amount is given here. 45 inches is the vertical amount that we have to travel to get from point A to point B. So we're going to have plus 45 inches in the j direction. And we also might have to travel in the z direction. However, in this case, the vector AB is actually in the xy plane, meaning to get from point A to point B, you don't have to displace yourself at all in the z axis, which means that we just have a plus zero inches in the k direction. Now this whole thing up here, that is the vector that takes you from point A to point B. Now again, this does not have unit length, which means we've got to normalize by dividing by the magnitude. Now the magnitude is just the three-dimensional Pythagorean theorem. So you take each component of your vector above and you plug it into the square root of the sum of the squares, like so. But I also wanna mention that the units of this denominator are also in inches. So you've got inches in the numerator, inches in the denominator. Those units will cancel out and therefore the uh, lambda vector is a unitless unit vector. 
that makes sense. So what we're left with is lambda AB, crunching through the numbers here, lambda AB is going to be equal to this vector here. So this is the unit vector that points in the direction from A to B, but it only has unit length. So if you want to actually visualize where lambda is on this original diagram, it would actually be here, right? So that's lambda AB. It's just simply the vector that points in the direction of vector AB. Okay, but remember that the force vector, the tension in AB, that vector is described by the magnitude multiplied by our unit vector. So at this point, we can write our T sub AB vector like so. So this is the force vector in tension AB, and it's expressed in terms of the unknown magnitude TAB. So we're still not able to solve the problem at this point, but what we're gonna do is a similar exercise to what we did up here for the other three force vectors in this free body diagram up here. And once we have that system of equations, we should then be able to solve for all of the magnitudes of the tensions in all of the cables. So what I mean by that is kind of look at the strategy that we used here, started with the general definition of the vector, figured out the unit vector, and then described that vector in a, in a somewhat general way with respect to the magnitude in that cable. We can do the same thing again for TAC and TAD and even the weight vector. So let's do that now. The vector TAC, that's gonna be equal to the magnitude of the tension in that cable times the unit vector from A to C, just like before. And now we need to figure out what is that unit vector. The unit vector from A to C is equal to the vector AC divided by the magnitude of that vector AC. So again, to figure out that vector, you've always got to refer back to your original diagram. Now we're not going from point A to point B. We want to figure out how to get from point A to point C. So the best way to do this, again, pretend you're standing at point A, figure out how much you need to go in each of the three coordinate directions to get to point C. Noting that vector AC is in the YZ plane, you don't have to displace yourself at all in the X direction. So we've got zero inches in the I direction. We also have to go upward along the Y axis by 45 inches. And we actually have to go along the negative Z axis, a distance of 24 inches. Noting again that if you pretend that you're standing at point A, in order to get to point C, you're actually going in the negative Z direction, right? So this is the positive Z axis, that's the negative Z axis. So point C is actually further behind point A along the z-axis, which is why we have the negative sign. So our numerator is finished. This is the vector from point A to point C. Again, that does not have unit length, so we're going to normalize like so, which will give us the unit vector lambda AC 0.88J minus 0.47K. Again, what we're trying to do is describe the vector TAC. So in order to do that, what we want to do is to just multiply by the magnitude. The equation that we're going to have for tension in cable AC, well, that's going to be 0i plus 0.88 TAC in the j direction minus 0.47 TAC in the k direction. Remember when we multiply by this magnitude, which is a scalar constant, that just gets distributed into each one of the terms in the unit vector. So that's why TAC is appearing in all these terms. Okay, so now we're two down. Let's just go through the third one. We'll do this one rather quickly, but you can see the same process being applied here. So to get the tension in cable AD, I'm gonna describe this as the magnitude of that tension times the unit vector in the direction of AD. The unit vector, of course, is gonna be described as the vector AD divided by the magnitude to normalize it to unit length. The vector AD, now this one's a little trickier than the previous two because none of the elements are gonna be zero. You'll notice if you're standing at point A, to get to point D, first you've gotta displace yourself in the X direction by an amount of negative 26 inches. And the reason that is negative is because again, you're starting at point A, point D is further behind point A along the negative X axis. So we'll note here that the vector AD, you gotta go negative 26 inches in the I direction. Again, we're going up 45 inches in the J direction. And the last one here is there is some displacement in the K direction as well. So going from A to point D, we're actually traveling outward along the positive Z axis by an amount 18 inches. So that's gonna be a positive value, plus 18 inches in the K direction. Again, of course, this vector does not have unit length. So we're going to normalize like so. And this, of course, is going to guarantee that our lambda vector has unit length. So our lambda vector works out to be this thing here.
Okay, so then we've got our unit vector, but again, we need to write the actual vector. Of course, that's equal to TAD multiplied into the unit vector lambda. Now there's one other force. If you remember, if you look at our free body diagram further up here, you did notice that there was one, two, three, four forces. So we also have to consider this force W here, and we wanna write it in proper vector form. It's gonna help us in just a minute. So that one's pretty straightforward because we already know which direction it's pointing. We don't need to do the unit vector approach because we know it's pointing straight down. So the vector W can be expressed in this way, standard vector form itself. So looking back at all the blue boxed up equations here, these are the four forces acting at particle A, right? So we've successfully described all four of these forces in generic form. We haven't solved for the magnitudes yet. However, what we can do now is use the fact that point A is not accelerating to our advantage. What I mean by that, of course, is that we know that we sum up all the forces at point A we know that they're gonna be equal to zero because point A is not accelerating, this is vector statics. The implication of this is that all of these forces, these all have to add up to zero because if they didn't, point A would be accelerating in one direction or another. And we just spent a bunch of time defining what all these four vectors are. So we're just gonna tabulate all those now, sum them together and see if we can extract any information. I'm just gonna do it this way, TAB plus TAC plus TAD plus the vector w, well, we know that those all have to sum up to zero. So the reason I wrote it vertically like this is so that I can write the actual equation across to the right. Okay, so these are the four equations that we had just derived here. Okay, so we know that the sum of all these forces have to add up to zero, which also means that the sum of each of these individual columns have to also add up to zero. So all of these have to add up to zero as well for the overall total to equal zero. It's the only way it can happen. And what this really is, if you think about it, so 0.53 TAB plus zero minus 0.47 AD minus zero is equal to zero. That's one equation. This column is another equation. This is another equation. So what this all boils down to is essentially three equations and three unknowns. The three unknowns being TAB, TAC and TAD. Those are the three tensions in the three cables that we're trying to solve for. Right. So another way to think about this is that this is all the force components in the I direction, this is all the force components in the J, and this last column is all components in the K. The first column is essentially sum of forces in the X direction equals zero, sum of forces Y equals zero, sum of forces Z equals zero, and essentially we've just done it all in this one table here, but this is fundamentally what's happening. We're summing up all the forces in the X direction, sending them equal to zero, all the forces in the Y direction, sending them equal to zero and so forth. Okay, so just to not skip any steps here, I'm gonna write out the actual three equations in question. So these are the three equations here. We can solve this a number of different ways. You can do a little bit of back substitution, or we can just take a matrix approach, which is a little bit cleaner, something I prefer to do. So the matrix solution is basically just packaging up all three of these equations into a single matrix equation. Each row of this matrix represents one of these equations. So the unknown vector, we'll call that TAB, TAC, TAD. This is our X vector, it's our unknown for the matrix equation. The A matrix and the B vector, well those are the coefficients of these equations, so like so. So all three of these equations are now described by this single matrix equation. It's just a nice compact way to do it. So it'd be 0.53 times TAB plus zero times TAC plus negative 0.47 times TAD, which if you notice, you get back the first equation, and all that should equal to zero. For the second equation, the same holds true. 0.85 TAB plus 0.88 TAC plus 0.82 TAD minus 1,000, which is what we had up here. There was no place for that in the A matrix. So we just added 1,000 to both sides of the equation, and that's where this 1,000 comes from in the B uh, vector. Solving this matrix equation is quite straightforward. There's a number of different ways you can do it, but I prefer to use MATLAB. It's really simple to use because in MATLAB, all you have to do is type X is equal to A, and then you use the backslash command, which does matrix inversion uh, if, if the matrix A is a full rank. If you execute this code, it'll actually spit out the vector X. These values represent, respectively, the tension in AB, the tension in cable AC, and the tension in cable 
AD, which is what we initially set out to solve in the first place. So at this point, we've found all of the magnitudes of the tensions in the three cables. If you have any questions about this problem, definitely drop. If you have any questions about this problem, drop them down in the comments. I'll do my best to get back to as many as I can. Of course, if you're a student here, just drop by office hours. We can chat in person. Thanks again for watching. And if you get a chance, definitely consider subscribing to our channel. We've got a ton of videos produced by our own faculty here in the mechanical engineering department, specifically designed for the courses in our ME curriculum. We'll see you in the next one.